Classic car rallying is now a hugely popular branch of motorsport. But for the sixth Classic Marathon, the organisers left behind the familiar mountains of Europe for more challenging territory. This is an oasis in Morocco on the edge of the Sahara Desert. The road to Morocco started four days earlier in Paris. A strange assortment of 75 vehicles had entered the first Classic Rally ever to hit Africa. The route through France and Spain was more of a gentle trundle, with the special sections requiring meticulous timekeeping rather than outright speed. Even the bulky Bentley Continental was unflustered. Father and son Tom and Nick Barrow entered one of the most unlikely machines of all, a 1958 Humber Super Snipe. It's pretty big, but it handles quite well. and it's Not too bad at all. Takes a bit of stopping, I imagine. Yeah, it does. Um, originally it was drums all round. We upgraded it to a 61 model, which has got discs on the front, which is much better. But why get a car of this size and then start taking it on classic rallies? Mm. Well, the car came before any thought of rallies, really. My father went to buy a lawnmower one day, and he came back with this and the lawnmower. <laughs> so that's how it started, really. But one notable driver was already having clutch trouble. The only problem was finding a reputable dealer. We're going to go into Seville try and find the Ford agent and see if we can get the clutch fitted so that when we go across on the ferry we have a clutch that works and if they can do something about the brakes as well that would be even better. If Morocco's going to be rough we really have to have the car in, in a bit better condition than it is now. You've had a couple of punctures as well I hear. Yes, oh yes we've had everything. We, in fact when I went round a corner and the grab handle fell off we decided there was nothing much <laughs> left to go wrong with this car. <laughs> The honourable member for Tweedale, Ettrick and Lauderdale in his borrowed Ford Zephyr had a struggle on his hands. He only just made it to the boat in time to make the short trip across the Straits of Gibraltar from Algeciras to Tangier. But the meat of the marathon was still to come. At this point, the leaders proved that it's not essential to enter an ex-rally car with all its trappings for success in this game. It's a 1963 Mark 10 Jaguar, which is uh, renowned to be the most inappropriate car you could possibly rally with so we thought we'd have a go with that. It's not too bad going downhill or on the flat with the auto but going uphill is, is very slow. So what do you think of this section that's coming up? Sounds like good for Actually a long section is going to be good for us because we'll be able to wind it up to speed and as long as we keep it below about 120 we should be alright. <laughs> <laughs> yes I'm sure. <laughs> In spite of problems, Rosemary Smith in her Sunbeam Tiger was facing the desert in confident mood. We're, you know, trundling along nicely now. We've no starter motor, but we're doing OK. So isn't it a bit precarious going off into these difficult sections in Africa with no starter motor and things like that? <laughs> we don't seem to have any option. I mean, it's either that or drop out of it. And my philosophy is you keep going until you can't go any further. Uh, the only thing I'm a bit concerned about is that apparently we need a compass in various places, so I don't know how that's going to work out, but no, we'll just keep going. After a lifetime in politics, David Steele is used to looking on the bright side. This is a real test, Africa. We, we, think, we think the Zephyr may come into its own. We don't know, but we think it'll be better than all these expensive cars because it'll, it'll ride over anything. So David's faith was, alas, misplaced for the wretched Zephyr conked out on the Tangier promenade. Under the watchful eye of traditional desert transport, the rest of the field prepared for the next morning's full speed blast. test in the Rift Mountains sadly brought an early casualty. We hit a big bump back there, we must have been doing well over 100 and uh, the sump shield has actually not protected the sump and power steering hoses and it's cracked the sump and one of the power steering hoses is split. If we keep filling it up maybe we can probably get it to a town. We're not competing anymore but we're going to get to those controls, we're going to finish. They did, last. 
Also butting against the odds were Hugh Morris and Peter Maguire in the smallest, slowest and oldest car on the trip. The somewhat overloaded 1930 Austin 7 Ulster Sport has a mere 747 cc's. You're looking very weather-beaten, if I may say. Uh, yes, I think I probably am. <laughs> Completely shattered, actually. <laughs> Is it uh, rather exhausting in this car? It's, yeah, it's, it's got a very hard ride. It's, uh, uh, we set it for the event. We set the back up a little bit, but it's still a bit low set. We start at the bottom. Uh, you're also deafened. And so, the topic that had dominated everybody's thoughts for four days, the Sahara Desert, came into view. It was as dry and demanding as everybody had feared, and no place I would think to drive a 40-year-old motor car. At the oasis town, I came across a man carrying water around in a dead goat skin. I couldn't resist trying it. <laughs> Delicious. <laughs> In the desert, there are no maps, so it's out with the compass and the best of British luck. Mad dogs and Englishmen go out in the midday sun. The Japanese don't care to, the Chinese don't dare to. Hindus and Argentines sleep firmly from 12 to 1, but Englishmen deter stars to your star. In the Philippines, they have lovely screens to protect you from the glare. In the Malay states, there are hats like plates which the British won't wear. At 12 noon, the natives swoon and no further work is done. But mad dogs and Englishmen go out in the midday sun. Surprisingly, nobody got lost and all emerged from their brief sortie into the Sahara unscathed. Even this glorious Type 46 Bugatti, which one would have thought would be enjoying a peaceful retirement in a museum somewhere. On its way to a second place was the lumbering Volvo Amazon of Frank Fennell from Dublin, helped by the masterful map reading of his navigator Colin Francis. And as the desert gave way to the twists and turns of the Atlas Mountains for the final competitive stages, no one could match the speed of Ignacio Sunsundiqui from Spain. He and his British co-driver Dave Nicholson didn't share a word of language in common, but they never got lost once. Colin Anderson and Richard Elvin's E-Type Jaguar finished third. And then there was the most dramatic prize-giving ceremony I've ever seen, held in an old desert fortress near Marrakesh. A mixture of charging cars amid charging horses. Well, the marathons come up to expectations and give or take 20 cars or so, all the old-timers have made it here to Marrakesh. But that's only half the story. We've also got to get back home and get all those valuable, indispensable household items purchased in the Moroccan souks back in one piece. 